I'm picking this cutie today because she's blooming and she smells, she smells amazing. Happy Saturday. Man, when I first started taking care of plants, I had no clue what I didn't know. I thought taking care of plants meant I buy what was cute and I water them and everything was okay. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I was totally wrong. So today I want to talk about some of the things that I had no clue. I just didn't know what I didn't know. And these were some of the wrong thinking that I had from the very beginning. And some of the bonehead moves that I made. It's funny now looking back on it, but at the time, I just didn't know what I didn't know. So let's get into it. So today I have about eight things that I did in the beginning of my journey that I, looking back, I won't call them mistakes. I will say they were learning opportunities. That's what we're going to call them. So today I'm going to share with you around somewhere around eight learning opportunities that I had learning how to take care of my plants. Looking at this plant here, this plant is a representation of the first learning opportunity. And that was repotting my plants in pots that were not the right size. So this plant looks like it might be potted in too big of a pot, right? You see a lot of soil and you might think to yourself, this is potted in a, a, a pot that's too big. And if I was just looking at it from the outside, I might agree with you. But the truth of the fact is when I first planted this plant up, it had a lot, a lot more leaves on it. And if you know, I did a video some time back about why this plant was struggling. This plant has a, a fantastic root system. However, the leaves were showing some damage because I was underwatering it. There's a whole reason why I was underwatering it and I have a video about it. Short, short story short, <laughs> I wasn't watering it enough and the, the plant has a tendency to pull back because it wants to stay alive. So it's going to make its leaves smaller or it's going to show signs of damage like that to let you know that this is not getting enough water, right? And I can show you that it's actually starting to grow um, out of the bottom a little bit too. So the root system on this plant is pretty good. So in all actuality, this is the right size pot with the medium and the, the root ball. It is the right size pot. But when I first started, if I had a huge plant, I would pot it in the biggest pot I could find, never once thinking that I needed to match that pot with that root ball. Um, but to be fair, I will say this much, it's better to err on the side of a too small of a pot than it is to get too large of a pot. Because what the, the reasoning behind that is, if the pot is too large, then the soil stays wet for too long and you can rot out your roots. I had no clue. I have killed a mini a plant because I put that new plant that, that I wanted to grow big. And my thought was, well, if I wanted to grow big, put it in a big pot so I don't have to repot it in the next year or so. Well, I didn't have to repot it because it was dead. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, hopefully I'm saving you the drama and you won't go through that. Make sure you repot your pots in a size that's no more than one to two bi inches bigger than the root ball. And I'm just bringing random plants because they're cute. <laughs> uh, number two, and you know, it's funny because Sandra mentioned this in her, in a post. I did a post about something and she mentioned that she used outside dirt to plant her plant in. And I chuckled because I've done the same thing. So number two thing that I did as a new plant parent was I used outside dirt to put my to plant my plants in. And some of you are probably saying, well, plants grow outside. Why can't you use outside dirt? It's not that the plant can't grow in the outside dirt, but the outside dirt is a whole different makeup than what you need as far as the medium inside your home. And so without going into too much detail, let me try to help break it down. Well, in your home, it's in a pot. That's number one. 
Also, you don't have the nutrients that are going on on the outside. You don't have the earthworms. You don't have all the, the ecosystem that goes on outside inside your home. So when you use outside dirt inside your home, you don't have those other things to help break it down. And that soil stays moist for a whole lot longer. Plus, you don't know what kind of granules you're bringing inside your house when you bring that stuff in. So unless you are going to grow those plants outside, I would not use outside soil. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to say that for me, that was the wrong answer, right? I did not. I don't like bugs. I don't like creepy crawlies. I don't like worms. None of that stuff. And so for me, bringing outside dirt inside the house was not a great option. I don't know if I told you this or not, but I didn't bring her here because she was she's planted in bad soil. I brought her here because I just thought she was so cute and she's growing so well. Look at her. Yeah, so if you have a plant that um, you want to repot, please purchase some house plant soil. They have some that are already made up. You don't have to do much to them, but yeah, don't use outside dirt. It is definitely not worth it. <laughs> If you like this kind of content, don't forget to give this video a like. And because you like this kind of content, you would absolutely love our community. So in order to join our community, hit that subscribe button and then check out the link in the description. There is a DIY bug spray that you can get for free. And when you do that, you will join my newsletter. So you will find out about all the new things happening on this channel and some shenanigans. All right, let's get back into it. Oh, this is the perfect example. Okay, so number three was believing the plant community propagation and the tags that they put on these plants. Let me tell you, I don't know how many times I've seen this tag, low light plants. It kind of it kind of burns me a little bit. It kind of pisses me off. And I get what they're trying to do, but it it is not it is not fair to those people who are trying to learn how to take care of plants let me start by saying this light is food for a plant there is not anything living on this earth that will do well when you refrain from giving them food okay food is energy and so when you don't give whatever that thing is, the energy that it needs to thrive, then just because it is surviving doesn't mean that it's doing well. So please do not, not give your plants light because a tag says that it is a low light plant. For one, there's no such thing as a low light plant. What I find though, is that the moment you say low light, people hear no light and they put these plants in closets and rooms that barely have a window or are covered with curtains and they think, oh, this plant will be fine and said it's a low light plant. Don't do it. Don't do it. I believe the hype, okay? I was one of those people and I read the, the, the tag and it said it literally. Like, you don't need it. And I would watch videos where people would do these experiments and put this plant in a closet for six months and it was still alive. That may be true. What they're not saying to you is that when a plant is in stress, it will call its pest friends. And then you got to deal with pest friends because what pests do not do is they don't come in and only get on the plant that's stressed out. They don't, it's, there's no secret trap door to where they come in the house and they only get on that one plant. Once you bring them in, they're introduced to all of your plants. <laughs> so do me a huge favor, right? Learn from my mistake. Don't believe the hype. That just because something says it's low light, that it doesn't need any light, right? The more light you can give a plant, the better. Now, it doesn't mean that you would take every plant and put it out in full sun. But what it does mean is that you don't want to give it no sun, right? Let's remove the extremes and, and try to come somewhere in the middle. If you remember the fact that light is this plant's energy source, light is what makes your plant, is one of the factors that makes your plant grow, then the last thing you would want to do is to not give your plant light. 
at least at some point during the day, during the week, during the month, your plant needs to have some light on it, some sunlight preferably, but some, some level of light, right? Cause that is how they photos photosynthesize. So, um, don't believe the hype. Don't, don't do what I did. I did it. I had plants that I did not give a lot of light to. They were in a lit enough space and they stayed alive. But when I look back on them, they were not thriving. They were not healthy at all. Okay. Definitely not like this bad boy here, right? You give your plants light, you acclimate them to even more light than what you think they might be kind of used to and let them tell you that that's too much light, right? I would rather for you to take that route than to go the route of giving them very, very little light and then your plants don't grow. At the very least, they won't grow, but at the most, they will call in their pest friends because that's a part of the way that they communicate with their own ecosystem. Plants are in a community with their ecosystem. And when a plant is stressing, it's going to call its pest friends to come and eat it so that the pest can then do what it does to the soil to make it viable so the roots can grow better. So you see they all give in this community type fashion. All right, off my soapbox. <laughs> Number four thing that I didn't know that I didn't know, I didn't know to do research. I thought I knew instinctively how to take care of a plant. In my mind, it was like, okay, plants need water and light. I knew they needed water and light, right? And I figured if I just gave the plant some water when it needed water, then everything would be fine. That's all I needed to know. Uh... I don't know how further from the truth that is. <laughs> um, there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, some of the simplest things in life are some of the hardest things to do, right? Taking care of plants is simple, but it's not always easy. And what I mean by that is, one, you gotta do some research. And it doesn't mean you need to be a botanist, right? You don't need to know everything about plants, but you kinda need to know what plants need and what those needs actually mean. Look at all around, she is no, she's not bald anywhere. She is thriving, she's blooming, she's thriving because I did my research on this plant and I found out what this plant needed. But you know, research is not just for the plant, the research is for me as well, right? For instance, what was that? Oh, a leaf fell. For instance, what I needed to know was what kind of plant parent I was because knowing what I will and will not want to do for a plant is going to help me to narrow down and, and curate my list of plants so that I have the energy to give these plants what they need to thrive. So not only do I need to research what the plant needs, but I also need to research what kind of plant parent I'm going to be, what kind of things that I am willing to do and what are what is sustainable within my lifestyle so that not only I can choose the right plants, but I can take good care of my plants, right? So definitely doing research. I I really, I that went way over my head in the very beginning. It never occurred to me that I needed to research plants. It was just like, yeah, buy plants. Buy a plant, it's cute. Put it over there in that corner and give it some water. It's fine. So hopefully I didn't scare anybody with that, especially if you're a new plant parent. Um, some of these things you just learn on the job and you figure it out as you go along. And you know what? You read the comments and you ask questions because there is somebody who has probably killed that plant and know exactly how to take care of their plant <laughs> because really that's part of the learning is bringing plants back to life <laughs> uh it's yeah it's true <laughs> okay isn't she cute this is my pepperomia i just thought i would show her because she's cute as a button and I just watered her. Okay, so number five thing that I didn't know that I didn't know when I first started taking care of plants was I truly confused light with nutrition. And you might think, what? <laughs> how, how is that? Okay, in my mind, I thought fertilizer was food for the plant. 
I was like, you give it fertilizer and fertilizer is food. And then I will fertilize my plant. Cause you know, in my mind, I would over love my plant and that would come in the form of water. And in that water, I would over love my plant with fertilizer. So if the fertilizer say give it seven, then surely eight is better, right? <laughs> so I would put this fertilizer in my water and over water my plant and wonder why my plant was not only was it not living, it was dying the worst, quickest death. If I wasn't overwatering it and I got the watering right, meaning that I kept it at the right level of moisture, I was burning the plant because I'm over fertilizing the plant, right? It's like, wait a minute, how do you know you're doing all these things? It wasn't until I took a step back and I took a scientific approach to taking care of my plants, meaning that I stopped fertilizing and just watered my plants. And then, only then, <laughs> did I decide to do research and realize that fertilizer is not food for your plant. Fertilizer does provide micronutrition uh, for your plant, but it's not food, meaning that you could grow your plants without putting any kind of nutrients in, in the soil or providing any kind of nutrients. And let me give you an example. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't think about her before. Um, this is my peace lily. The parent to this peace lily is that peace lily right here. Same plant. I took a piece off of this, I stuck it in water. How is that, Yvette? How is that plant with those baby leaves the same as that plant? Because this does not get any nutrients. This gets all the water it needs. It gets all the air and circulation that it needs, right? But the one thing that it is not getting in in any form, maybe very small form, is nutrients. So is this plant alive and thriving? I would say this plant is alive. Could it be bigger? Yes. The plant is smart enough to know that it's not getting enough nutrients to make these leaves big and massive, right? That's why the leaves are not big and massive because it wouldn't get enough nutrients to be able to sustain that. So in reality, if I gave this plant some nutrients, it probably, the leaves would probably grow bigger. The new leaves would probably come out and grow much bigger than that. Well, in the beginning, I had no clue that light and nutrients were two different things. Light is the energy that this plant needs. That photosynthesis is what gives this plant enough energy for it to grow. The nutrients is what allows the plant to grow even bigger, right? Um, and I'm no scientist. I'm still, in, in a lot of ways, I'm still learning a lot about the difference between light and nutrients. But one thing I will say is that just this alone has shown me that a plant can live without nutrient. It cannot live without light. Now I can, I, I've had this plant in here for over well over three years now. So this is definitely proof that a plant can live at least a peace lily, right? But I'm, I'm pretty sure most plants can live without a lot of nutrients, but it can't live without light. Now, am I to believe that with all of these roots and what's going on in here, that there's not some nutrients in this water? No. For one, I, I would give little micro doses of some of my liquid dirt in here. When it's full like this with water, I might add a couple of tablespoons of the diluted stuff in here just so it'll have a little something, right? Which is why it is a little, it's cute. But I wanted to show that because I want to say that the moment that I started understanding why things were doing what it was doing, it made plant care or me taking care of my plants a whole lot easier, right? So five, do your research, right? Even if it's just light research, I mean, a little research, right? You don't have to be a botanist. You don't have to figure out how all the things work, but get a basic understanding of what all comes to play comes into play when it comes to growing plants. For sure, I can tell you that your plant needs four things. It needs light, it needs water, 
It needs air and it needs some level of nutrients, right? Okay, you guys have seen this beauty, but she's so pretty. I have to bring her back on a regular basis. This is my Baltic Blue and I just repotted her <laughs> for the third time in the last like, I would say 12, 18 months. I know that's a bit excessive in real life, but the sixth reason that I wanted to talk about, or the sixth thing that I didn't know that I didn't know was I was deathly afraid of repotting. It, for whatever reason, I don't know, it was something like, oh my God, I don't want to take the, it out of its pot. So I would buy a plant and it would stay in that pot for years. <laughs> afraid to repot and let me tell you you learn so much when you repot there are two ways that I think like really elevates your learning to the next level and that is propagating and repotting now could your plant die from you doing both of them yeah but the chances are slim right like the thing about it is is that until you learn how to undo what you're doing it makes you walk a, it makes you move a different way when you're dealing with plants let me say let me say it a different way when i learned how to knit until i learned how to fix my knitting meaning if i dropped a stitch how to fix it i would i was so timid i couldn't even enjoy knitting because i couldn't make a mistake because if i made a mistake i had to take the whole thing out because i didn't know how to fix it it's the same thing with plants if you don't know how to fix it, if you don't know how to fix the thing that's going wrong, then it makes you deathly afraid to take care of them. Learning how to propagate and learning how to repot are two things that are going to bring you to that next level. And be, taking care of plants then becomes, you know, just like brushing your teeth. It's You don't even have to think about it. So this was a fairly new repot or second repot. I repotted the mother plant I propagated and then put those back into the, the um, pot here. She's already got some roots growing out the bottom. So <laughs> I'm not worried about her. I think she's going to fill up. She's already filled up this pot, but I think I could probably go maybe one or two more years, maybe with her in this pot. Um, but she's growing fantastic. She has probably... Uh, maybe doubled in size since I got her. Let me tell you, repotting and propagating are your best friends, right? They not only generate growth on your mother plant, but those new plants become, those propagations become a new plant. And you either you can add them. Now, I like lush plants, so I like to add mine in with the mother plant. But you could also take and pot up, pot them up separately and make a whole new pot of of the same plant so don't do like i did um don't be afraid to repot now is there some strategies and things that you might need to know about repotting absolutely yeah there's a couple of nuances that you probably need to know but do a little research the research definitely won't hurt you take some chances right and take a mental note or even write it down. Like I like to write down those kinds of things because you know, my brain will forget them, right? But write those things down so that you know when you go back to do it again, oh, don't do that again because that didn't work. Using outside dirt <laughs> does not work when you need to repot your plants. <laughs> but yeah, definitely repotting and propagating. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay, number seven was, and you know, maybe it's just me, I don't know, but I can't remember when I first came to realization that plants have their own set of pests, um, but I can remember for a long time not even knowing that plants have their own set of pests. My biggest concern was getting, and I'm going to keep it real, getting the miracle dirt miracle Grow dirt from the Walmart and it being wet and having fungus gnats, right? You might even find an earthworm or something in there and that will gross me out. Maybe a ladybug or something, some spiders, right? So those were the pests that I considered 
when I would bring home my soil, but it was associated with the soil, right? Never in a million years that I knew, did I know plants have their own pests. So when we talking about plant pests, we're not talking about spiders and ladybugs and earthworms. We're talking about thrips and mealybugs and spider mites flat mites. We're talking about bugs like that. I never knew what that was. I had no clue. I I promise you, I probably was, I was a long time in the game. I'm almost embarrassed to say, I'm not embarrassed. It is what it is. I was probably a decade or so in the game. I want to say I learned about plant pests when I started learning about taking care of orchids. That's when I realized. Now, I will say I can vaguely remember spider webs on a plant, but I thought that was regular spiders, not spider mites. I didn't know what a spider mite was. And a, be- a mealy bug was the little bugs you saw in the flower, you know, in the white flower, not something from your plant. I was clueless. I had no clue. I didn't even, and this, like I said, this was one of those things that I didn't even know I didn't know. I had no clue. And to be fair, I don't, I don't remember anybody. I don't remember any of the old heads that had plants even talking about bugs. Maybe, and maybe I just assumed that they were talking about bugs that I knew from outside, but it never occurred to me that plants came with pests. Now I will drop this little gem. I will say this much. I think these exotic plants that we bring in from these places that don't match where we live, I think when we bring those kind of plants in our home and we try to set up an environment that that mimics their environment but it's not really how we live, I think that causes more issues than having plants that are more than okay with living in, in your environment. And think about I think about it like I think about what we call domesticated animals. A dog and a cat, their lifestyle, and maybe because we forced it to, but their lifestyle seems to match more with how we live than a mountain lion or a grizzly bear, right? (laughs) So I feel the same way about plants. There are some plants that are common plants that do well in our environment because that's an environment that is... Uh, comparable to where they're from. Now, I'm pretty sure they live in more humid, more lush environments. However, they're tolerable to our environment. Some plants are not at all tolerable to our environment. And for me, this is a rule of thumb. If I have to lock you up in a cabinet to keep you, even saying it out loud, it sounds awful. I have to lock you up in a cabinet in order to keep you. That sounds awful. I don't want to do it. (laughs) I don't want to do it. I'm not judging anybody that does, but I don't want to do it. I feel like, I honestly feel like those plants bring in more pests. So all that to say that one of the things that I didn't know that I didn't know was that plants come with their own pest. Um, And yes, you can find ways to combat them, but some plants, having some plants in your home means that you are in a constant battle with keeping those pests at bay. And I don't want no smoke. I don't want it. Get somebody else to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want it. Okay. So the last two I'm going to combine into one because I think it all kind of kind of goes together and I think it already goes together with something I've already said. For me, the best way to learn how to take care of a plant is not this easy list of do these 10 things and your plant will be blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. So what I believe the best way to take care of your plant is to learn how to assess your plant. Once, like I said, once you learn how to propagate or repot your plant, you know how to set up the the ideal condition for them. You learn how to come and look at your plant. Like, 
When I say I take, I love to sit and look at my plants, it's because as I'm looking at my plants, I can see where the new growth is coming from. I see what that new growth looks like, right? If I'm looking at my new growth and I see that the end of my new growth is brown and crispy, that's giving me an indication that something is not quite right. Like it should come out and be fully ready to meet, greet the world, right? Like it should be soft and it should be bright green and you should be able to look at your plant and observe and figure things out based on looking at your plant. So to me, learning how to assess your plants is the best way to learn how to care for plants in general. Because what I can assess and learn from this plant, I can apply to another kind of plant, especially another plant that has the same care needs as this plant, right? So learning how to assess your plants, learning how to propagate, learning how to repot, not only learning about what the plant needs, but learn about what my care type is going to be like. If I know I'm not gonna go out and collect rainwater or I'm not going to um, sustain some sort of cabinet or super humid environment so that you can stay alive, not only can I curate a list of plants that will work well in my environment, I can curate a list of plants that will work well for my personality as well. So to me, combining that, combining the assessment along with curating a list of plants that will work well for me and my environment makes my plant care life so much more enjoyable. So really quickly, let's go back over the roughly seven to eight things that I wish I knew that I didn't know when I first started taking care of plants. Number one, is making sure when you repot your pot your plants that you repot based on the root ball and it should be one to two inches larger than the root ball and don't take into account the leaves the leaves are not what's getting potted it's the roots that are getting potted right number two don't use outside dirt <laughs> don't do it for those of you that are learning and you're not about amending outside soil and doing all the things that you need to do to outside soil to bring it in the house just buy some soil that uh, will work that is a a, um, a well draining soil that will work well with your plants and if you don't know what any of that means then go to a nursery and ask them to give you a well draining soil that's applicable or appropriate for the type of plants that you are buying. Matter of fact, look at the soil that it's planted in and let that give you some context clues, okay? That's part of assessment. Number three, take those tags that you have with that comes along with your plant and read them, but read them with a discerning eye. I will say this much, if the tag says full bright sun, that is not a house plant for you. Unless you live outside in the full bright sun, don't bring that home and try to grow that in your house. I don't even care if you got uh, grow lights, don't do it. <laughs> Number four, do your research. Do, do your research about plants, do your research about how plants in general grow and do your research about yourself. Take an assessment of yourself. Take an assessment of your environment because that's going to help make your whole plant experience a lot more joyful and restful. Like you don't want to be stressed out about your plants. No, it's not a good look. Number five is, like I said, associated with number four. Do your research about light and nutrients and knowing the difference about your water, about air circulation. These are the four things that every plant needs to thrive in your care. Light, water, nutrients, and air. Okay? Number six is learn how to embrace repotting and propagating your plants. You will learn so much from that. Number... Seven is realize that plants come with their own pests. You can prevent. Number eight is, to me, the biggest one is the learning how to assess your plants. Learn how to read your plants. Learn how 
to recognize when your plants are in trouble. Um, seem like she always getting a debut on the video. <laughs> um, for instance, this this leaf right here is starting to turn yellow, right? And for someone who has never taken care of this plant or someone in general, they might look at this and go, oh, that looks sick. That doesn't look right. To be fair, this is what a healthy leaf turning yellow looks like. There's no disease. There's no not enough sun. There's no not enough water for this plant. But in all actuality, leaves get old and they turn yellow when they die. Well, had I not done some assessment, had I not been aware of how this plant grows and what it looks like and knowing what enough water looks like for this plant, what enough nutrients looks like for this plant, I would take that as a, as a bad sign. But I know that this means, it just means that this plant is getting old. I'm not even going to snatch it off because she's still providing nutrients. She's still providing energy back to this plant. So even though she is using up some energy, she's also providing some energy still, even with her dying. This is her dying, her regular dying death, right? This is it, right? Um, so yeah, learn how to assess your plants. I think learning how to assess your plants is going to take you a long way. Um, you will find that people will give you this list. Oh, you know, what are your plants every seven days? You know, put them in the sun for five hours a day, da 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 da, da. And that might be a great place to start, right? Especially if you don't know where to start. But don't leave it at that because it's not going to serve you well. It's not going to help you figure out the difference between this plant and this plant or this plant and a Hoyo, this plant and a cactus, right? When And if you want to expand on your plant collection and learn how to take care of other plants, it would do you well to learn how to take care of plants in general and what the difference is between the type of plants. And you will find that there will be some plants that you will have all the knowledge in the world on how to take care of, but your personality just won't jive with that plant. <coughs> Syngonium, it just doesn't jive with that plant, right? <laughs> So hopefully this will help some of you guys, some of you new people, even some of you old heads. Because I tell you, I learn some new things every day. I've been following this course a little bit on how to, um, about how the water comes up and the nutrients come down and the different parts of and the cells in the plant. I've been learning so much. I find it so fascinating because one of the things that I wanted to figure out was how plants know how to grow a leaf versus roots. It is fascinating. Once I get it down pat, I will bring it to you guys. I will share it with you as much as I can. But I'm learning so much. It's absolutely fascinating. So um, that's all I got for today, you guys. If no one else has said it to you today, have a great day. Bye. <laughs> and so that is, the that is the point of plants. I got stuck. <laughs>